Okay, good. So um, this is, we're gonna talk about cybersecurity as far as the end user goes. This is not, this training is not designed for um, IT pros. Uh, very passionate about this training because um, we do have the IT staff, uh, you know, at our companies, uh, they spend hours of hours of training, uh, work, hard work set up, security appliances, uh, softwares, everything. But then uh, we have somebody in the company that it clicks on a link or or just go to a website that they shouldn't and cause a data breach or cybersecurity issues. So the whole purpose of uh, this uh, training is uh, just uh, educate um, end users and on how to be uh, more vigilant when it comes to the comp uh, um, online services. So uh, this webinar, we're gonna talk about um, the um, materials that is gonna be covered during the uh, training, the real training. Um, I'm gonna show you some uh, tips and tricks, basically um, a few things that how uh, can uh, make you a little bit safer on on uh, internet. So let's go ahead and start. Um, you know, uh, we use internet every day. Um, you know, we use it for um, business, obviously banking shopping staying in contact with friends and family that's a big uh, big thing about uh, internet these days and uh with um the way that the technology moves these days um you know a, a very profitable business has started a few years ago um and it's one of the most profitable business in the world and that's basically hacking cyber attacks uh they make a lot of money actually i just uh, a couple of days ago i read a, an article that they were talking about that Bank robbery is not uh, uh, like the old days that they run to the bank and you know rob the bank. Now they do it digitally um, over online services. So um, we're gonna uh, need to train everybody to be more vigilant and uh, more uh, secure and behave secure when it comes to online services. Um, again, as I said, the security uh, professional's nightmare is uh, somebody in our company just do something that they shouldn't and click on a link or, or um, go to a website or, or lose their smartphone with no, no passwords or use a weak password, you know, a lot of things. And one of the things that I want to talk about is that if you have uh, that old uh, mentality of it won't happen to me, you really need to forget that because it's going to happen to everybody. It's going to happen to everybody in this world. And we just have to learn how to minim minimize our damages and when uh, we shouldn't be the cause of it. You know, we need to be safe. Now, um, this slide says that network security is a major concern for every company. I'm uh, gonna go one step further and I say that it should be a major concern to every single uh, person in this world. If you use a smartphone, uh, you know, iPhone, Androids, if you use a tablet, uh, security should be a major concern. Um, we we all use. I mean, a few months ago, um, I had somebody in my training that says that, oh, I'm completely off the grid. I don't use anything online. I don't do online shopping. I don't do emails, nothing like that. Uh, so I'm safe. And uh, my response was that, uh, do you use your credit card at the store? And he looked at me like, you know, I'm crazy. And he goes, yeah. I said, well, if you use your credit card at the store, you're online. As soon as you swipe that card, you are online. So again, Network security should be a major concern. Now, look at the look at these numbers. Uh, these are the published number for um, 2015. So over 700 million records were breached in 2015. So, I'm telling you right now, things are not getting better as it goes. So, look at what happened in 2016. Over 1 billion records were breached, and we're not counting that uh, over 1.5 billion records from Yahoo in these. Uh, numbers. So if we add those, it's going to be um, a lot higher, almost three, three, 3 billion records. So as I said earlier, things are not getting better as uh, time goes. So what do you think happened in 2017? You know, just somebody want to guess. Um, we don't have the uh, number for the whole year right now, the exact, uh, but the very first six months of 2017, the number was almost 2 billion, 1.9 billion records. So look what happened from 2015, 700 million. Then we went to 2016, 1.3 billion. And then 
very first six months of 2017, it was 1.9 billion records. And uh, again, we don't have the exact numbers, but I'm telling you that it's, it's, it was over 3 billion records. So if you look at the uh, bottom row, it shows uh, 122 records per second were breached in the first six months of 2017. Uh, that's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of records being uh, hacked every day, every second. So there have been a lot of studies um, of uh, why why these things happen, why uh, you know companies uh, uh, get hacked, and uh, and how they get hacked. And one of the things that came out, it came out actually last uh, January in 2017. It points out that 90 percent of the uh, these data breaches happen. Uh, from uh, malicious emails, and uh, it, it always to, uh, points to the lack of uh, employee training. Everything that we've seen so far always points to the lack of uh, training. Um, so, what it means to be, have a culture of cybersecurity? Um, this was published by Forbes uh, a few months ago, and uh, it's a it's a very um, uh, interesting article to read. If if you guys are really interested, you can Google this and read it. A uh, couple of things they point out in this article. First of all, every 40 seconds, a business falls victim of a ransomware attack. What's a ransomware? Ransomware, a type of um, attacks that encrypts the data on your computer. If you're connected to a network, encrypts all the data on your network. Um, there is no fix for it. You know, every time they come up for a, with a fix, there is a new string of these ransomers are out there. And uh, they can get through firewalls and, uh, and antivirus spam filters. Um, and you either have to pay the ransom or forget about your data and uh, restore it from backup if you do have a backup. Um, you're going to see in a few seconds, a lot of big uh, names got ha uh, attacked by ransomware in the last couple of years. And uh, another thing that uh, they point out uh, in this article is that um, the employees are the number one defense against the cyber attack. The same time, they're the biggest vulnerability because most of the time, uh, over 90% of the time, uh, all these attacks or all these cyber breaches happen because an employee uh, did something, um, you know, unintentionally um, when they were online, either through the email or, or websites or even social medias. Um, so. Also, um, having policies and procedures in place is not enough. It's it's a must. You have to have some kind of policies and procedures in place for online services when it comes uh, to work environment. But it's not enough because if people don't understand why it is important to um, know about the phishing emails or spear phishing emails, they also need to know how to uh, recognize these things. Also, why are we talking about two factors authentication? Why are we talking about complex passwords? In a, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you on what I mean by complex passwords. Most of the time, when I ask people what's a complex passwords, they tell me, oh, eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, um, a symbol, and numbers. Uh, well, that that was true back in 2012 or 2013. Now. It's not. Eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols uh, is not a complex password anymore. And um, look at this one. Um, Anti-hacking units of uh, Verizon got hacked a couple years ago. So nobody's safe, as I said earlier. Uh, these are the guys who get paid to uh, fight hackers to create a secure network for Verizon, and they got uh, hacked. So. Um, Again, nobody's safe. So what are the causes? As I said, there have been a lot of research and everything points out uh, most of the time to human error. Uh, if you look at these numbers, 43% phishing hacking malware and then 32% employee action. So um, even lost the stolen uh, devices can be traced to um, human or employees actions. So if you look at it, it's over 80% uh, of uh, the time or even 90%, it's uh, because people uh, don't pay attention on what they're doing and some of these uh, breaches happen um, you know human error it's always traced back to human error most of these uh, breaches um, most of you remember about anthem uh, they got uh, hacked a couple of years ago um, 
it, it made a lot of noise. Um, you know, this report came out last January 2017. This is this was the final reports, and it points out to a phishing email. If you look at this, just look at the keyword: a phishing email. One phishing email created the whole problem for Anthem. We don't know how many people got that email, how many people click on the links or downloaded the attachment, but one email went through that company and created uh, such a huge problem. Um, they're not done yet. You know, uh, again, the last uh, uh, report came out, uh, you know, there is a lawsuit against Anthem right now going on. And one of the things in the lawsuit is that why Anthem didn't train their employees, why they give them so much access. So um, again, everything goes back to um, human error. Um, Navy, US Navy got breached um, in 2016. Uh, an employee, a contractor actually walked in the Navy yard to do some work and his laptop was uh, infected. He didn't know his laptop is infected. You know, he went to do some work. He connected his uh, laptop to the network and Navy yard and uh, an unknown individual access 130,000 records of uh, US sailors. Uh, because of that, most of the military uh, services, they changed their policies. Now nobody can use their uh, external devices or external computers on their um, on the bases. But again, things can happen. US Navy even got hacked. Um, this Los Angeles hospital uh, a couple of years ago, they got hacked and they paid seventeen thousand dollars to get their data back. As I said, the ransomware become a goldmine for hackers because it's easy. They just send this email, mass emails, and wait for somebody to click on the link, and uh, they sit there and collect money because if they want data, they have to pay for it, and uh, they spread more quickly. Again, um, they most of them are fileless, so it can be uh, picked up by uh, security appliances or, or softwares in place. And uh, that's what most of these uh, hacks happen. And one of the worst part of it is that over 97% of emails, or, or I want to say malicious emails, in a, a third quarter of 2016 contain ransomware. Uh, again, it's easy money. Um, some good example of it, uh, examples of it, uh, this hotel in Austria, they got hacked, all the guests were locked out of the room because they hacked into their locking system. Um, Sacramento, um, Sacramento Transit, actually a couple months ago, uh, about four months ago, they paid $8,000 to get their data back. RTC out of Nevada back in 2016, uh, they paid $1.4 million to get their data back. And I mean, I can show you companies name after, one after another. Department of Justice, Internal Revenue Services, Cisco, Premier Healthcare, um, even San Francisco Public Transport, uh, the ticketing machine, Verizon, uh, Equifax, um, Forever 21. I mean, Uber is just countless of the companies that they've got hacked uh, in last couple of years. So what's the cost of a data breach? You know, um, I'm talking about these companies, they got hacked, they pay 8,000, they pay 1.4 million, they pay 17,000. That's not the end of the um, story here because they paid that money to just get their data back. Now, there are a lot of other costs involved to remedy the situation, you know. Um, so this, this report was um, published a few months ago. Um, Basically, the average cost in U.S. for a company to remedy the situation, it's over $7 million. So it's about $225 per record. And if you're in the healthcare business, that number is a lot higher. It's about $350 per record. So you can see how it can become very costly for a company to have a data breach. Now, um, I've talked to a lot of people um, in last... Uh, Year, I've heard a lot of people telling me that, oh, we're a small business, we're not in the we're not even a target, you know. Uh, and when I talk about the small business, I'm talking about companies less than 200 employees, so still a good size companies. And uh, that might have been true a few years ago, you know, 2016, they say 43% of the small businesses were targeted. Um, but 
as I showed you earlier, things are not getting any better. Um, actually, uh, back in 2016 or 2017, this uh, report came out, and it just says it's not a matter of when. Um, it's, it's a matter of when, not if anymore. All the small businesses are targeted these days. You can't put a number in front of it anymore. And the worst part of it is that 60% of these companies, they go out of business within six months of a cyber attack because they cannot cope with uh, the expenses of a cyber attack. And again, they're very um, easy target because they don't have all the um, uh, resources that a large enterprise has. So um, if you are a part of a small business, you really need to think about these issues. So why this thing happen? You know, you have an IT department in place. Um, as I said earlier, they spend money. They spend a lot of time. They uh, upgrade, they update, they install new equipment, new software. So why these things happen? You know, um, my example I always give um, to my class is that, let's say I have uh, the safest car in the world. You know, what's the safest car in the world in your eyes? Just think about it for a second. If you have a teenager and you want to buy a safe car for them and money is no object, what's the safest car in you buy, you're going to buy? Um, and most of the time, I hear Volvo. I don't know why, but people say Volvo. And, you know, I've never driven a Volvo, but I, I go with that. So I have a Volvo, the safest car in the world. And I get on the freeway and I start driving carelessly. So what happens? I can get into an accident in a matter of seconds. I can hurt myself or hurt somebody in a matter of seconds. So I can be in the sec most secure car in the world, most safest car in the world, but if I don't behave safely, that's that car is worthless. Might as well be in, in a you know Pinto or something. So um, again, uh, the purpose of uh, this training that we created is uh, to teach people how to be safe online. Um, I like this uh, cartoon, you know, you got all the data security sitting in one corner, and then you got an employee or somebody who's not behaving safe uh, sitting in another corner. Uh, so these two, they have to work together. Now, majority of cyber attacks happens in these three fashions. Again, as I said, uh, majority of them, not all of them. Uh, malware, spyware, viruses, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time to talk about these. Pretty much everybody's familiar with the terms and what they do. Shoulder surfing. Uh, this type of uh, attack actually became very popular in the last few years. Why? Because uh, People do not need to be uh, tech savvy to do something like this. Uh, the very interesting one I saw was about a year and a half ago. I was in Ontario Airport in Southern California, uh, walking to my gate, and I saw this lady sitting uh, at the corner of these row, the seats, and she was typing on her laptop, and the guy was standing next to her, and he had his phone by his ear, Pretending, pretending, talking to his uh, to his phone. You know, I'm passing by, and I kind of notice he's holding his phone kind of weird. And as I look, I saw he was recording. He was recording everything that she was doing on her laptop. Um, you've seen shoulder surfing um, probably everywhere. Next time when you're at checkout uh, lines, you're at the Starbucks uh, or any public area, look, see what uh, what you see. People are always there on their phone or laptops or tablets. They're doing things, and somebody always standing over their shoulder and watching. I'm not going to say that every single time is for malicious reason, but you never know. So you really have to be careful on what you're doing. Even if you think, oh, I'm on Instagram or Facebook, who cares? Uh, one of the things during the uh, training, I teach people, I show people how a company uh, was hacked and lost all their data just by um, Facebook pages that employees have, personal Facebook pages, not business. So again, every data can be used against you. It's important. And then social engineering, that's what uh, the majority of uh, the training uh, happens. We're, talk we're gonna talk about social engineering. I'm gonna give you some flavor of it today. Um, and those are the stuff that, um, 
um, pretty popular. We all heard about phishing, you know, uh, phishing is one type of social engineering. So what that means, actually it came from the word phishing, you know, uh, you, when you go fishing, you know, you, you put a bait uh, on the hook and you throw it in the water and you wait till uh, you get, you know, you lure some fish. Uh, that's what happened. They send them uh, a mass email, you know, millions and millions of emails. And uh, uh, they ask for uh, uh, some kind of uh, sensitive information. And when I talk about sensitive information, it's not just social security driver license anymore. Anything that can be used against you it's a sensitive information that can be your birthday, that can be the address, that can be anything, you know, anything. Even your cats and dogs name. You cannot imagine how many passwords we can reset with just a pet's name. So they, what they do, they create a fake message. It looks like an, a, a legitimate message. And it comes and they ask you to do something, either to click on a link and uh, enter some information or download an attachment and um, look at some information. Um, and sometimes even they redirect you to a website. So th those are the type of phishing. Um, one of the um, advices that I can give you is when you see an email that says your account locked out, they want to confirm an order, or they want to give you a free gift, uh, delete them. First of all, there is no such a thing as free anymore. We're in 2018, and I'm sorry to say that, nobody gives you anything for free. Account locked out, um, well, if the account is locked out and you're kind of not sure if this email is legitimate or not, I would suggest to call, pick up the phone and call that company or go to their website yourself. Don't click on the link or the phone number that gives you in the email. And order confirmation, did you really order something? And if you really wanna make sure that your order was placed, again, you go to the website your own uh, typing by your own typing, not clicking on a link, not calling the number that's in the email. So, a couple of uh, good example of phishing. Look at this Chase email. Uh, Chase um, email came to me. It came to my personal account. I do have a Chase account, so it was telling me that uh, they suspended my online access. They want me to click on a link. This is another one. My sister got this. Uh, well, they were asking her to uh, click on the link and reset her password. Now. I own uh, my own domain. I take care of it myself. I'm hosting it myself, so um, and I don't use Outlook Web Access. But look at this email. For somebody who doesn't know, like somebody like my sister, uh, it, had she clicked on this link here, it says Outlook Web App. There was a page uh, look like exactly look like a Microsoft Outlook uh, Web Access, and she. Uh, had she put her uh, email address and a password, she would have given um, access uh, to the hackers to her email and, um, and uh, email accounts. So what do we keep on our emails? You know, most people, they have bank statements, credit card statements, schools, uh, uh, records, uh, children's uh, information. A lot of sensitive information can be on email. So again, she was smart enough to send me this email to make sure it's legitimate or not, and uh, I could, as soon as I look at it, I know it's not. But again, this is a type of phishing email. This is another one. Um, if you look at it, Chase, again, uh, activities uh, at chaseonline.com, they send me this. Again, this is another type of phishing email. Um, a good example of it, PayPal. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with PayPal. Look at this email. It looks as legitimate as it can be. They even give me a reference number in the middle of the page but this is a fake email. Now, as I said, there are uh, different types of uh, social engineering. That was phishing. Now let's talk about farming. Farming is when you go to a website and you think you're on the right website, but you're not. Um, you know, you click on a link or you type the website, you mistype it, and it goes to, again, to the page that you really think you are, but you're not. Look at this one. This is a Facebook page. Everybody's familiar with this one, but this is a fake page. This is another one. This is, again, it's a fake page. Now, uh, keep in mind, these pages, um, the day that I was searching for, I was preparing for this presentation, those are the pages that I found. Um, every day, there are hundreds of these pages out there. And they come online, they stay online for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, couple hours, as soon as they get the, enough information, username, passwords, they go offline. So they change the look and the strings all the time. Now, another type of uh, social engineering is spear phishing. This type of uh, 
social engineering, this type of attack has uh, uh, over 85% uh, success rate. And uh, uh, it is a big uh, issues right now for the companies and individuals. Why? Because uh, the hackers actually, they target you individually. They know your uh, work habits. They know your uh, lifestyles. You know, they know what you're doing in your life. And they target you directly. Um, and uh, as I said, that's why they have um, over 85% success rate. Uh, look at this one. This came to me. Uh, uh, came from service at paypal.com. It had my personal account. And it looks very legitimate. Everything looks very good. It was targeted to me. I had my personal email accounts in there. But when I uh, look at this, this was a, a spear phishing email. Uh, this is another, uh, actually, Yahoo. I, I was talking about this earlier. Yahoo um, lost uh, one point, over 1.5 billion records uh, a year ago. Uh, and uh, the final report that was uh, published a few months ago um, points out to one spear phishing email. So one person, one individual in the company click on the link and 1.5 billion records were breached. Just imagine how bad it is. So spear phishing can be very costly for a company. And I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks uh, in a few minutes how to recognize these things. Uh, well in your CEO fraud, this is another social engineering. Uh, this, uh, this one actually became pretty popular in the last few years again. Um, they either target a CEO or C-level employees in the company, or they pretend to be that uh, C-level employee and send an email to the rest of the company. Uh, Mattel lost $3 million in 2015 to one of these uh, fraud. And uh, Snapchat, actually, in 2016, fell victim to this. And, and, and um, an employee in uh, Snapchat got an email, supposedly from CEO, asking for payroll information of all employees. She replied back to the email, supposedly sent it back to the CEO with all the payroll information, but it didn't go to CEO. Actually, he didn't ask. It went to somebody else. Uh, these are a couple of examples uh, of these uh, type of emails. Uh, you see this. This was uh, targeted to a C-level employee, um, employee of a company. Uh, they knew that he had to go stand in front of a, a grand jury, and they asked him to download the attachment. Uh, the documents. He did that, and the whole company got encrypted with the ransomware. This is another one um, that looked like it came from a, a manager to an employee asking to process an outgoing payments. And this is another one that asking for the vendor bank uh, banking instructions uh, for a payment. Now, uh, clone phishing, it's another type of social engineering. If you have, uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody pretty uh, have uh, experienced this. Um, at some point, you get an email. You know, I'm not going to say if it's legitimate or not. You know, you get an email. Uh, a couple of days later, a couple hours later, I don't know, a little bit later, you get another email exactly the same thing. It's identical. This is a clone phishing. So one of those emails are legitimate email. The second one is not. The second one, if you click on the links or download the attachment, is going to go somewhere else or download different things. But it looks exactly the same. So you got to be careful with the clone phishing. And there are other types of social engineering that we're, we don't have time to talk about it today, uh, especially in wishing when it comes to voice and text and uh, a couple other ones. Now, how to avoid phishing? Uh, you know, I always tell people, don't feed the fish, you know, if you don't want to be a uh, victim. Uh, look at this email. This is actually one of my colleagues um, got this email uh, last year. She gave me permission to use this. Uh, at the time, she was going through a divorce. So this is a good example of uh, spear phishing. Uh, if you look at this email, um, look at the bottom part of it. It says, my name is Vincent Capucci, and he is a senior partner at this um, law firm. Um, now, they knew she's going through a divorce, so they targeted her. Just imagine, you know, you're going through a divorce. It's an emotional type for somebody. And they send you something like this, you know, what's your first, you know, reaction? You're gonna click on the link, see what, the, what are those documents? Well, she was smart enough not to do this, and she sent me this uh, email. But if you look at this, if you hover your mouse over the link, you can see it's not even going to a company or website in this country. It goes to somewhere in Africa, byteshop.co. So this was a, a good um, 
example of uh, spear phishing. When I got this email, I tested it, and when you click on that uh, link, actually you don't download the document, you download a uh, ransomware. So had she clicked on this link, our whole company could have gotten a ransomware and uh, encrypted. Again, the email that it came from looked legitimate. The email that it came to, it was legitimate, but the link was a, a, a red flag here. So one of the things you need to do is just hover your mouse over the link and make sure it's going to the right place. Uh, look at this one. This one, again, is uh, one of my colleagues got this a couple of days ago, um, and she forwarded it to me. Uh, it seems like there is a problem with her Apple account. But look here. Uh, who sent this email? That didn't come from Apple. It came from something is very strange. I can't even read it. So I, I'm not even going to waste uh, to read the rest of this email. I'm just going to delete this. This is a fake email. Again, she knew she realized this, and she sent it to me to use it for my presentation. So you really need to look at where the email come from, where it's going to, and then you can check the links in an email. So this is a good example of a spear phishing. Again, this came to me personally. It came to my personal account. If you look at it, the email address that it came from, it looks legitimate. Actually, it is legitimate, the email address. Um, my email address was in the two location. That was legitimate. But when I hover my mouse over continue, it's going to a website in Russia. Now, when I did this, when I was testing this, when I click on continue, you get a website that looks exactly like PayPal, but it is not a PayPal -like, uh, page. So these are a couple of ways of uh, looking at uh, uh, phishing emails and how to avoid them. Uh, there are other uh, ways of to cover these things. Now, um, by the way, if anybody has any questions, please do type it in the chat box. Uh, Jesse and Brandy are on the call. I think they can uh, monitor the chat and we can discuss the questions at the end. So let's talk about uh, social networks, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, um, there are so many on Google+, Plus. I mean, Twitter. Um, you know, Facebook is pretty big these days. Um, Pretty much everybody has Facebook. Um, in my classes, every time I ask so, uh, the whole class that how many people don't have Facebook, there's only, always one or two people they don't. So um, again, because of that, it's a very good platform for um, cyber attacks. Hackers, you know, can get all kind of information off of somebody's uh, Facebook uh, page. Um, the very first thing I want to show you, actually, when it comes to social media. This thing has been going around uh, for about a year, maybe a little bit over a year, um, and it's still going around. Uh, there is a message you get in your uh, Facebook Messenger or LinkedIn, and it tells, uh, it says, LOL, OMG, have a look at this. I can't believe someone posted this. And there's an image, or it can be a zip file. So if you click on the zip file or that image, what happens, a Dropbox opens up in your computer, your computer gets infected. Everybody on your friends list is going to get this message, and that infection does something to your computer. I'm not sure what, but I've never gone that far. So if you get a message like this, make sure you delete it, even if it comes from your friends. And besides that, uh, there is no reason to download any type of zip files through Facebook or LinkedIn Messenger. So um, again, um, the discussion of when it comes to social network, it can be a little bit lengthy because I can show uh, during the class, uh, how a company got hacked and lost a lot of data um, just by uh, looking at uh, Facebook pages, personal Facebook pages of employees. So it's really important to know about that. Now, um, very quickly, let's talk about uh, passwords and passwords complexity. Uh, look at this. Uh, over 63% of data breaches are uh, traced back to a weak password. You know, Equifax got hacked last year, or announced that they got hacked, and it was about 124 million records or something like that. Uh, one of the reports that I read, the system administrator had passwords as password. So pa her, his password or her password was password, uh, which is, uh, it's not um, acceptable at all. So if you look at the uh, uh, most common passwords of uh, 2015 and 2016, so uh, actually, these are from 2016. One, two, three, four, five, six is still number one. Uh, password is number two. Uh, this is 
funny, but not funny, haha, funny. It's very uh, concerning that somebody who has access to my personal accounts or personal information uses a password like this. Now, look at the 2017 common passwords. Still the same. People are still using one, two, three, four, five, six as a password, which is ridiculous. So just imagine my personal information, your personal information is in the hand of somebody who uses this password. Um, so when it comes to uh, personal uh, complex passwords, you know, as I said earlier, eight character passwords, uh, yeah, they were good one day, sometimes, sometimes ago, but not today. Look at this. Let's choose. Let's choose this. Uh, actually, let's do this. So, I got eight characters password. It says football, and I have zero and exclamation in there. So I got number, uppercase, and uh, a symbol. So, if I look at this, and I don't really have time to show you how fast I can crack this passwords, but let me see if I can bring my mouse down here. And I type the same thing. Uh, oops, I think I missed type something. Hang on a second. Football. Exclamation. Here we go. So uppercase, lowercase, number, and symbol. It takes 19 minutes to crack it. This is like a little bit exaggerated. Actually, it takes about 14 minutes. So. Uh, if you think that eight characters password is good, no, it's not. Now, what happens if you type 10 characters? If you, let's go back here and I type, I don't know, another uh, five, five at the end. So I make it to 10 characters. So if I come back here and I add the five, five, now you can see it's much better, one month. Still not good enough. So when we talk about complex passwords, this is not a complex password anymore. We're talking about something like this. Um, let's make it something like this. It says I love football. It's uh, lowercase, uppercase numbers and symbols. So if I cover, I uh, check this one. Let's see what happens here. It says three million years. So you can see the difference between the passwords. So. The complex password is not a word uh, that you can use with the uppercase, lowercase numbers. Actually, if the word can be found in any dictionary, um, it doesn't matter if it's Spanish, uh, English, German, any Latin-based languages, it can be hacked pretty quick. But when you make it to a sentence and you use numbers or substitute numbers uh, instead of the letters, and uh, you use symbols instead of letters, then you create a complex password. So I want to make sure everybody is clear on this. So when we talk about complex passwords, we're not talking about something like this football uh, 55. We're talking about something like this. I love football with the exclamation. So I hope this clears out uh, when uh, we talk about complex passwords. Now, let me go back where I was. So the way I look at the uh, passwords, uh, choose a good one. Again, I just showed you how to choose a good one. Don't share it with anyone. You know, and a uh, few years ago, I went to visit one of my clients. Um, they had this uh, lady sitting at, uh, at the front. She was a very nice, friendly woman. I walked in, she saw me, she was so happy. She was like, Sean, please come and help me. Um, something going on with my computer. I went sat in front of her computer. She had a post-it note. It says my computer password. And they had the password and it was stuck to her uh, monitor. So. Don't do that. Don't write it on a post-it note. Don't put it under your keyboard or anywhere like that. Don't share it with anyone. Make sure you keep it in a secure place. And change it occasionally. You know, For me, personally, <clears throat> I change my passwords for um, sensitive information uh, or sensitive websites. I change them every three to four months. Stuff that is not that sensitive, I change them every six months. The ones that I really don't care, you know, if I go shopping somewhere and um, I just create some strange password and uh, next year when I want to go shop again, I just click on forgot password and I um, reset that password. But things that I use on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, I try to create a password that I can remember and I change them 
every three to four months. So that that's as far as the password it can go right now. Um, again, it's very important that you have a very good complex passwords in place. Now, um, we've got a few more minutes. Let's talk about external drives. Now, when I talk about external drives, um, we can uh, it can be USB flash drives, it can be your smartphones, uh, it can be tablets, you know, or external hard drives. So uh, these things, especially the USB flash drives, you know, people pass them like candy. You know, everywhere you go, there is one. Every desk you look, there is one. You know, and that's why it became a, 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 again a goldmine for hackers, because they can put. Uh, key loggers or, or some kind of infection on those um, USB flash drives and we can um, spread them for them. Um, you know, I've had people that tell me, oh, I can format it. Yeah, well, yeah, you can, but sometimes there are uh, things can be embedded into the firmware of that flash drive. So you really have to be careful uh, where you got that flash drive before you use it on your computer. Um, if you're not sure, you know, get with your IT stuff, I have them check it out. Um, or purchase uh, these type of devices from uh, legitimate um, vendors. You know, if you see something strange, um, actually it was last year in one of the counties in uh, Southern California, I was doing this training for them. And the IT guy told me that he bought a, I don't know, 120 gigs flash drive for 14, 15 bucks um, off of Amazon. And then he got it. Um, when he got it, he realized that it was it came from overseas. It came from China, and you know he's an IT guy, so he plugged it into computer and scanned it, and uh, you know, surely enough, it was uh, infected. So um, again, make sure you purchase it from uh, somewhere legitimate. Even if you go to Amazon, you purchase it. Make sure you buy it from somebody in this country. Uh, at least check, make sure it says fulfilled by Amazon. Again, uh, nothing is hundred percent but we can minimize our damages this way. So um, again, and one of the other things that I've seen people do, um, plug their uh, phones to the computers to charge. Uh, that's a big no-no. You know, you have an iOS, if you have a, an Apple um, or iPhone, and you have an Android or operating system on your Android devices, um, you can access an, a phishing email or, or a, a malicious email, click on a link and download the virus to your phone. But those viruses, most of the time, uh, they're designed for Windows uh, machines. So uh, you're not going to see any effect on your phone. They can sit on your phone forever, and it's not going to do anything to them. But as soon as you plug in your phone to the computer, what happens? That phone becomes a drive on your phone, on your computer. And if there is a Windows-designed virus on that phone, can be transferred to your computer and infect your phone. So. Don't charge your phone with the computer. Make sure you plug it into the wall. Um, again, a, a lot of people heard about Stuxnet. You know, that was the uh, type of infection that brought down uh, Iranian nuclear facility a couple of years ago. That went there with a USB flash drive. Till today, Stuxnet is one of the most sophisticated viruses out there. It's not, it cannot be uh, recognized pretty quick. So again, when you see a flash drive sitting on the floor, on a desk or anywhere, uh, do yourself a favor. If you don't know who the owner is, just pick it up and throw it away. Don't use it. These things are very cheap. And uh, you can just ignore uh, you know, those things. And if you need it, go buy one. You know? So um, again, these are some numbers that uh, we talked about earlier. Um, if you look at this uh, reports, you know, 70% of cyber attacks use combination of phishing and hacking techniques. Again, phishing emails are pretty uh, dangerous these days. Uh, farming is redirected websites also uh, pretty dangerous when it comes to for the companies. So we do have this end user cyber training. Um, I just uh, showed you a, feel, a flavor of it. I showed you a few things how to recognize a couple of uh, phishing emails. Um, but during this training, we cover all these stuff that you see on the screen. We talk about all the different types of social engineering. Uh, we talk about uh, emails, how to recognize red flags, fake emails, online shopping, how to do online shopping safe, social media again, and we cover the external devices in details. Um, I don't have anything else here. Actually, I pass it to Jesse. Jesse has a couple of slides I uh, would like to talk about, uh, about uh, our social channels. Jesse, are you still here? 
Yeah, definitely. I uh, just wanted to make sure that if you uh, enjoyed this webinar and you are uh, connected with us somehow, um, just make sure that you stay connected. These are uh, legitimate uh, social channels uh, for, our, for New Horizons Learning Group. We will uh, continuously, and we do post breaking industry news, uh, you know, such as the latest viruses and hacks, very in the know with uh, um, tips and tricks for from some of our expert uh, instructors on cybersecurity and a whole lot more. Plus, uh, you'll keep in the know for future free webinars announcements and reminders as well as uh, updates to pr product certifications and different uh, version updates. So if you want to stay in the know and the loop and uh, uh, keep in touch with us, the social networks are going to be on the following slide and you can just visit those. And it's basically at NH Learning Group across the board, except for uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. And also to um, ensure that we keep the uh, latest and greatest up-to-date information for you, what you desire, and these webinars um, uh, up to par for um, free presentations with the best insightful um, uh, things for you. We want to um, invite you to take this uh, survey real quick. It's about one to four minutes before you leave. I'll put the link in the chat box. And uh, if you have any questions, now would be the